Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, you may have seen these shows before. I do these to supplement the presentations that I do on elder law in a variety of places, among others here in the, at the uh, Carriage House in Wayland. The purpose of these shows is to go beyond what you could learn in a seminar about law or specific issues by really having you know the players, the people that you need to know as you confront issues, a whole set of issues that you could be confronting as an elder. And two of the players that you have to know if you're living here in Wayland, in Wayland are these two folks, Judy Boyko and Lauren Schiffman, mm -hmm. from what was Still the, is. And still is the, the Natick <laughs> DNA. Yeah, that's right. Um, so thank you very much for both coming on to the show. Well, thank, thank you for, for having, having us. So let, let's start. Can you just tell us a little bit, Lauren, tell us how you ended up here, and then Judy, tell us how you founded this. It seems like you've been there for a, a long time. <laughs> I feel as if for I For a have, long yeah. time. Yeah. Lauren, how did, you, how did you find your way to here? I have a background in communications and public relations, mm -hmm. and I had taken some time off after the birth of my son, and when I was looking to re-enter the workforce, I knew that I wanted to get into healthcare yeah. as well as nonprofit because that was the industry that gave me the most personal fulfillment in my previous work. Right. So I was looking for positions in this arena, and this opportunity came along, and I jumped at it, and I'm <laughs> thrilled that I did. And we're thrilled you did too. Thank That's you. great. That's great. And, and Judy, you you are you are well. And Lauren, you're not from you're from New York originally. Originally, right? yes. And Judy, you're from far away Pennsylvania. I am. Yeah. But somehow found your way here a long a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. So tell me tell me us about your involvement at the in the VNA and what you you well, are you originally you're a nurse. By, yes, I by am. Profession. I'm a nurse by profession. Yeah. Um, been a nurse a long time. The to tell you the truth, the only type of nursing I've ever done in my professional life has mm -hmm. been public health, community health, visiting nurse work. I see. I'm not a person that's ever worked specifically in a hospital, although I did teach nursing for a while, for about five years, in um, hospital programs. So yeah. the students that I worked with, of course, were in the hospital. But my real love was home health, community health. Um, and that's kind of the essence of what the VNA. It is. That was the it point is. of VNA. Yeah, right. I think, you know, we. A lot of times when we recruit staff to our agency, we tell them that home health, home care, and care in the home yeah. is very different from care in an institution because it allows the clinicians that are in the home with, with patients and families to really connect, right. become, in some cases, almost part of the family. We get to know the patients and their families very well. As a nurse, you're able to really practice holistically. You look at the person from a, from a holistic point of view. You bring in other community resources when you need to, other people who, who can help care for the patient and the family. Um, and it's very individual focused, along with family. A lot of our patients yeah. have family members in the home. So my real love really has always been home care. Has been, and, yeah. and obviously uh, home, stuff that's really built around where my clients really want to be. I that's was right. mentioning to you before, I have these that's sort right. of pretend couple, Frank and Mary. And their goal in life is to die and be buried in the backyard. And that's what right. everybody really wants, is to be able to stay at home. Right. And it sounds like, it must be interesting for you because it seems like over time, the kind of care model is shifting toward that. That Absolutely. people are getting more and more aware that you want to do things at home. That's very true. You so, know. so can you tell us a little bit about, their, I know that you're the Natick VNA, but I originally got introduced to you by Lauren, <laughs> who came to visit us from Century, Century, Century Health, Health Systems. Systems. Yes. And I was like, so how does this work? <laughs> so can you just talk sure. about, and from when you've explained it to me, you've talked about it a little bit in terms of the evolution of it and how yeah. the pieces came together. So can you just talk sure. about that a little bit? Well, the Natick Visiting Nurse Association, first of all, has been around a long time. We've been around yeah. since 1899. That's a long time. That's, That's a very long time. Even before I was born. <laughs> way before. Um, and well, in, not way before, but yeah. Well, yeah, way before. Was. Um, 2001, the Board of Trustees of the Natick VNA, and I mm -hmm. should say, you know, Natick VNA is a not for profit, freestanding, independent home health agency. Mm -hmm. Our board made a decision in 2001 to establish a not for profit parent organization, mm -hmm. Century Health System. And we had a couple of reasons for doing that. Number one, at the time, because of the Medicare reimbursement system for home care, it was sometimes difficult for the VNA to afford to do some of the wellness, health promotion uh, activities and get paid for doing them, get, get money to cover the, the services. Because Medicare wasn't Medicare paying. Medicare wasn't paying. They won't pay for that. So mm -hmm. 
the board said, let's take all of those, those uh, roles and those functions and put them in a not-for-profit parent. It mm -hmm. would also enable us to, if we needed to, get grant money for those programs. So things like that VNAs have historically done, blood pressure clinics, elder wellness clinics, newborn new baby visits, flu clinics, uh, we do a tremendous amount of health education programs out of our parents. So all of those functions we put into the parent. I see. Freeing the Natick VNA to be purely a home health agency. And a home health agency has kind of a specific meaning. Yes. That's the magic name. That's right. That Medicare calls. That's right. The people that they pay to do this kind of really professional work or, or right. skilled, skilled care it's in the home. Skilled yeah. care in the home. That's absolutely right. For instance, we have nurses on our staff. We have physical, occupational, and speech therapists on our staff, medical yeah. social worker. We um, work with our sister organization, Distinguished Care Options, for yeah. home health aid support. So all of those services through the VNA are generally paid for by Medicare, Medicaid, HMOs, some private insurances. So it's a real, it's a set of skilled services that we offer in the VNA. And I want to be talking a little bit more about the distinguished care, about the, the home care piece. But can we, I just want to talk about this a little sure. bit more. So I know that kind of the average person, like my clients and me until recently, thought that the only time that you could be in the home with those kinds of services paid for by Medicare was after a stay in a hospital. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's a very, it's a very right. common belief because you get discharged from the hospital and that's what they'll tell you. They'll, they'll give you your discharge papers and call the VNA. That's right. right? And, that's kinda, and then the VNA is going to figure out your program that's right. and then provide these services. That's right. But there's another vehicle to get those services, right? To be, to be able to get the home service. Can you just talk about that just a little bit? You mean in terms of like our private duty the, or, or in terms of the so-called 60-day plans. If a doctor says... Oh, 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 yeah. You know, we get a lot of patients, for instance, directly from the doctor's office. And so a which, physician, which, which most elders don't realize can happen. No, that's right. If you, if you are an older yeah. person and you are with your physician, your doctor, and you have issues going on that need some follow-up or you need care at home, your doctor can call us directly and say, I would like to make a referral for Mrs. Smith. Uh, she's a newly diagnosed diabetic person. She needs some follow-up in the home. So there are lots of reasons why people come from a doctor's office to us as well as from the hospital. As well as Sometimes from the even from rehab centers, nursing homes, um, who also call us and say, you know, this person really wants to go home or needs to go home or it's time for them to go home, right. but they need some follow-up care. And in those cases, Medicare, Medicaid, HMOs will generally pick up the cost of those services. If they are deemed medically necessary, they are intermittent in nature, and they are skilled. And they're skilled you were services. Saying. That's right. 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 And so, so it's just important that folks know that there are those other options. And oh, that, yeah. And that they don't yeah. have to be afraid that's that right. you're going to be getting there and all of a sudden they're going to get this huge bill because they're that's on right. private pay and they, they didn't no, no, know no. it. Not through the VNA. No. So, let, so now let's, let's talk a little bit about those home care services because so often, you know, I've got clients, I always, I always say to people, like kind of my, my clients either, they've, they're either worried about Alzheimer's or they have yes. Alzheimer's or somebody they know has it, yeah. right? And, and I realize that they, we, I use Alzheimer's as kind of the global thing because it's the main cause of dementia, but it's folks that have dementia. That's right. So, so many people are in those situations where what they need is not defined by Medicare mm -hmm. as quote unquote mm -hmm. skilled enough, mm -hmm. right? So that Medicare would be paying for it, right? Well, it's, well, it's interesting in terms of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. Mm -hmm. The VNA, Natick VNA, sees a number of those people. In fact, um, recently, we've gone through a period where we're actually training and certifying our staff through habilitation training through Alzheimer's Association so that our staff can bring their skill level up because we're seeing Alzheimer's not necessarily as a primary diagnosis or primary reason why people may come to us, but they may come to us out of the hospital having had surgery, but they also have Alzheimer's. Oh, or some that's other great. So that's great because there are those special, special needs trained, that a that's right. has. That's right. I, I remember watching some of the habilitation yeah. training, learning right. how to speak Alzheimer's. That's mm -hmm. right. Otherwise, you can't get to those other issues. That's or right. it's very hard cause, because there's a whole other set of things that are happening. Well, one of the things we've been doing through Century Health Systems, our yeah. parent, and maybe Lauren can speak to this, we have also been doing what is known as a virtual dementia what, what, tour. Yeah, a virtual dementia tour. And, you know, that we've, pro we've been providing that actually to senior centers and other groups of people so that the public and people who work in senior centers, assisted living,
can sort of get a feel for what does it really mean to have Alzheimer's what, disease or dementia. So let's ask Lauren so, about that, a yeah. virtual right. dementia tour. Yeah. Virtual is, dementia is tour is a program that was developed by an organization called Second Wind Dreams. And Second Wind, Second Wind Dreams. Dreams. Mm -hmm. And the virtual dementia tour, or VDT, is a simula it mimics what having Alzheimer's or dementia is. So without giving away the trade secrets, <laughs> the people who participate in the VDT are garbed up with special um, clothing and equipment. You don't get these virtual reality glasses. They're not virtual reality glasses, but you <laughs> yeah. do wear a certain type of glasses. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Sure, to, to mimic what it's like to have macular degeneration. Yep. Yeah. And some of the other conditions that people can learn about are uh, neuropathy and arthritis. Um, there's noise in the background because there's oftentimes people with dementia can't focus if there's extra noise in the background. Right. So, they're, so the people who participate are given certain tasks to complete within a certain amount of time. And they're given a pre-test and a post-test, which isn't really a test. It's more a, a gauge of their opinion on what dementia mm -hmm. is and how it affects people. And really the goal of this is for people, participants, to develop empathy, to help them get a better understanding of either what their patient or their loved one is going through so that they can t sort of take a step back and say, okay, I'm not going to get as frustrated with mom this time because now I understand why a simple task for me is so difficult for her. Right, right. And, why, so, and why she just, you can't keep asking her to remember your name. That's you know right, I mean? that's right. What, right. What is, what is the, it's funny because I remember before the show we were talking a little bit about that as it might apply to even community-wide, trying right. to look for those tools through which you could get whole that's communities. Right which are dementia friendly, yes, and by virtue right. of which a lot of people are feeling, why well, you're not walking down the street thinking or feeling funny because yeah. you're like kind of stigmatized by all mm -hmm. of this. But th this drifts away from where we were going. So, so as part of all of the support for a lot of these things, you're, you're, you're really kind of, you're, you're talking about more home care, mm -hmm. and you've been developing more home mm -hmm. care over time, and there is this other name that you've got. There's another, there's another entity here that's called... Our, our private duty is yes. called Distinguished Care Option. Distinguished Care Options. And, and how did that evolve? Well... Um, so, funny I should ask. <laughs> funny you should funny ask. Funny I should ask. Right. Um, actually, again, it was a great decision on the part of our board yeah. um, because we were finding that a lot of patients who had been getting home health aid services mm -hmm. through the VNA, and I hope folks understand, home health aids are really... Or they're really an important member of the healthcare team. They're the folks that are in the homes with patients and families for extended periods of time. They're there to help with bathing, with getting meals, maybe doing some exercises that, mm -hmm. th that need to be done, helping with walking, um, helping with all of those activities of daily living that patients really need help with as they get older in some cases. Well, when, when patients who were getting skilled care under the VNA were also getting these home health aid services, again, covered by Medicare, when the Medicare benefit ends, or... Because you no longer need the skills. That's care. right, because the skilled, the clinicians in the VNA say, you know what, you've reached your goals, I think it's time for us to discharge you from skilled care. Well, some of these patients and families say, yeah, but I still want and need a home health aid. That's going to go on for a period of time. Right. So we took the home health aides that were employed by the native VNA, and we plunked them down in this brand new company, Distinguished Care Options, which we made our private duty partner. The Natick VNA has an arrangement with Distinguished Care Options whereby those aides still see patients who need skilled care through the VNA, but when that skilled care ends and they still want the aid, they just keep the same aid. So there's this seamless um, continuity moving continuity of care, of care yeah. moving back and forth across the, the sort of the home care continuum which has really been great for patients because they feel they know that aid, they don't have to tell their story all over again to somebody else when right. they need private care. Right. Um, and, the, and DCO actually along with the aid services. DCO, excuse distinguished, me, distinguished, distinguished care, care options. options. Excuse me, that's our okay. shortcut, our yeah. little shorthand. Um, they offer some other services that are really important to people on a long-term basis, things like homemakers, companions, we also Homemakers meaning people who make meals. That's people right. Who, that's right. People, people who, who are clean up. That's as right. As opposed to just helping you get With across physical the room care. That's or right. helping you dress or whatever. That yeah. helping right. the home is helping well. the home. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I mean, companions. Some people really just want or need a companion, somebody to come in, maybe help read the mail if they have if they have visual problems, um, spend some time with them, socialization, right. those kinds of things. We also have a program um, called uh, Voice Care, which is a personal emergency response system 
the old lifeline that many people know about, yeah. which works really well for people. We have a number and, of... And how does that work? Well, it's it's like most people wear either a medallion around the neck. I think I don't know right, if they have like one. Like a little button. Yeah. Like so that if, yeah. in the case of an emergency, well, you know, heaven forbid, you fall down or you have another emergency, you press that button and, and it summons emergency help, um, which is really helpful, particularly to some people who are um, have disabilities or illnesses which might cause them to faint, which might cause them to be if they're at risk for falls. Just happened. My wife and I were visiting her sister who has seizures. There you go. And who literally, yeah. while we were there, I was in the other room, I came back, and the sister was falling down on the floor yeah. and is having a seizure. Well, fortunately, my wife, her sister, was there because she didn't have a lifeline on. Oh, okay. She would have been dead. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She would have been dead because she, yeah. she had nothing, no way she was getting to the phone to call That's anybody. That's right, right. You know? That's right. So, so how, does, how does your, what, what are you? So we, we use, that, that system can be employed um, at a very reasonable, again, it's private pay, unless, um, I think under certain circumstances, Medicaid will cover something like that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we can't convince private insurance companies or, the, or Medicare to cover it because yeah. it's a really necessary service. But um, patients and families can elect to have that and pay on a private pay basis. Mm -hmm. And we have found that to be very helpful for some older people who are literally living alone whose families, you know, children, maybe siblings, other family are far enough away that they can't get there quickly enough. Right. So it's kind of peace of mind in a way for some of these families. I see. We also see. have um, in the VNA, we have a telehealth program that functions pretty much the same way. Um, patients have a very small monitor that's left in the home, and they take their blood pressure, their pulse, their respirations, breathing. There's a device that measures oxygen blood level. We can weigh them. And this is all just connected it's this connected is all back. Virtual, so yes, it's, connected, yes. Back it's, to you it's connected back so that a nurse can see day to day what's going on with the person in terms of their vital signs. Yeah. And you know, we've been in a position to catch things before they become a real big problem, which helps keep people out of the emergency this room, is out of the hospital. So, so it is the so what is how is how are those measurements being taken in the home? Is somebody well, need to, to to log in to something? Well, there's a little monitor which actually. Pro <laughs> prompts the patient to do what they need to do. And the little monitor is just on? It's hooked it's up just through on. the internet yes, or it's, a phone yes. line. It's I see. hooked up through the phone line. I see. So it's kind I of, see. you're right, it's virtual. Yeah. So it means, and of course it's not appropriate for all patients. Right. You know, these patients have to be capable of getting on a scale, capable of putting a blood pressure cuff on, right. putting the um, pulse ox device on their finger. But for many of our patients, we have about 60, 65 of these monitors out at any given time with patients. Yeah. And um, Patients and families have really found value in it, and we've, on many occasions, actually saved people mm -hmm. who, as you say, might have passed in the Be home. Because you're just picking up the You pick it up right away. It's real it time. It's real time. And yeah. one of the nice things, too, about telemonitors is that it, it allows patients to be an active participant in their right. own health care. They're not just sitting there waiting for their nurses right. or therapists or right. dietitians or social workers to come in, but they're actively, they're playing an active role in their, own care. in their own care. So right. it provides them peace of mind, it provides their families peace of mind, and like Judy That's said, right. when our nurse reads out the numbers from a, from a trend standpoint, if we see something, if one of our clinicians sees something that is unusual or that stands out right. within that trend, we pick up the phone and call the patient and have a conversation mm -hmm. because some of those numbers might indicate that an adverse health event is, is upcoming. Is and mm -hmm. I suppose this would be one of the advantages if you're, if if I'm Frank and Mary and I'm at home and I'm trying to figure out who I am bringing in as a home care agency, one of the advantages to having somebody that's the, whose, whose sister entity is the VNA mm -hmm. right. is that there's, real, there's just real kind of health perspective right. kind of what people are doing. Because right. it's kind of in the nature of things, if you're Frank and Mary, you, you're, you're getting older, which means there are health issues that are kind of like popping right. up all right. the time. Now, th this also leads, though, to, as I had mentioned w earlier, the, the, my couple is Frank and Mary, and their kids are Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And as I always <laughs> tell people, if, if my clients are old enough to get that joke. So, and in their case, typically it's Mary Jr. who was the one who was the, inevitably the designated daughter. Peter yeah. and Paul are far away, yeah. and they're working, and right. And, as, and it has been my experience that typically it's a daughter. Sometimes yeah. it's a designated son, but usually. So what is your communication with Mary Jr.? You know, if you're distinguished care options and you're taking care of mom, but Mary Jr. is really stressed out because she's the one who's always really taking care of mom. That's you right. Know, how, how do you connect her into the system and make her feel 
really comfortable about that. I, I think that's one of the really great things about our agency because I think the nurses, the, ther the rehab therapists that work with us, the aides themselves, mm -hmm. all of those people really go out of their way to maintain contact with family members. We specifically, when we take a person onto our service, we specifically ask, who should we contact when there are issues? Who, 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 you know, who do you want mm -hmm. us to really be working with? Who's your primary other caregiver or person who's an emergency contact? So there's a lot of personal communication that way. We also have, again, a special um, duo of nurses connected to the Natick VNA and Century Health Systems called Care Transition Coordinators. A duo they are, of nurses. Yes, there's two nurses here, um, Deb Hershon and um, Tricia St. Martin. Oh, two very specific two very specific okay. nurses yeah. who have years of experience in home health care. Great people. They really are there to be that kind of bridge. Yeah. So when we get a referral for services, whether it's from the patient themselves, from a doctor, from a hospital, either Deb or Tricia will actually visit the hospital, visit the nursing home, visit the assisted living, talk with the person that's going to come on to service, talk with the yeah. family if they're available, the caregivers that have been caring, and they help make that transition home smooth. And then they can also be a contact person for a patient's family member. I see. To so, be and I think, I think the other piece about our agency, which is really great, and we, we developed this actually at the suggestion of family members, doctors, So you really like staff. your agency. I love it. I think <laughs> I feel very fortunate, you know, yeah. I think that we've got that's great clear. staff. Um, Where was I going with that? The staff. You well, were going to talk go about palliative care, I think. Well, no, I was going to, so. you know what I was going to talk about was our customer service center. Mm -hmm. Because oh, yes. it kind of sets our agency apart. When you call for Natick VNA or Distinguished Care Options or Century Health Systems, you get a person that a answers real person. the phone. Mm -hmm. You don't get a press one if you want this, press two, press three, whatever. It's right. a real person. And that person then can right away connect you with whatever service. And also help people figure out what services That's they right. need. That's another right. piece of it is that a lot of times people, if That's it's right. not doctors or maybe even doctors, family members will call, say, mom or dad needs your services. They're like, here's well, which, the problem, but I don't which know Which services right. do, I, do right. I need? Right. And I just know somebody's sick. I don't know what. Right. right. I don't know what I'm supposed yeah, to do. I don't do. know what's behind the curtain here. That's all these different agencies exactly. and things. Exactly. Right. Right. So both Deb and Trish, as well as the folks in the call center, can actually help answer, help address the issues to figure out Mm -hmm. where they should direct the call. So it's it's really an educational yeah. um, process for people who call in and know they need us in some capacity, but don't, don't know what that capacity but aren't, is. But aren't quite sure which. That's right. So you, you've seen this thing evolve over time, and yes. you really develop these kind of segments over time. Where do you see it going from your own perspective? Where do you I see think, it going? well, I think home care is just going to be where it's at. I think, as you said earlier, more and more people are going to want and need home health care because yeah. we try and keep people out of a hospital if they don't need to be there. And so out of, God forbid, a nursing home. I mean, yes. it's always the yes. dreaded, those two words. Yeah. Nothing is, is those two, nothing is worse to an older person That's than just right. even saying nursing home. That's and I right. suppose that also deals with, in the future, kind of how we need to have nursing homes change. Because That's right. it can't be that a certain segment of the population is going to be in a place that we really don't want to be. That's right. right. But, but at, so do you think it's going to be more and more? I think the demand be? is going to be there. I think the one thing that we really need assistance with is for the payers of care to mm. recognize the value of home health care and how important it is. And that it truly, not only is it the most compassionate, most you know, appreciated, most desired place to get care, um, but it's also cost effective. It's also efficient. Mm -hmm. And it's efficient. So um, that's, that's a challenge for home health care. Right. But I think as time goes on too, um, you know, we're, we're trying to keep our staff ever more trained, credentialed, certified. I mean, we have specialized nurses that do very specialized wound care. Um, we have a wonderful palliative care program called Comfort Care, um, which again was developed at the request of patients, family members, and our own nursing staff who said many patients are dealing with a, an illness that's probably going to be terminal for them. They don't and they want to die at and home. And they want to die at home. They want to die at home. Some patients appropriately elect to go with a hospice program, but some patients don't. They still want to get active treatment for a cancer right. or some other disease, and we're able to care for those patients and deal with very specific symptom management, very specific pain management, 
We have a fabulous physician who's our medical director for that program, Joel Bauman, who does just wonderful work with our nursing staff. They love him. He's a great source of information. I mean, he knows so much about caring for these patients when they're at home. It's his thing. He really loves it, too. So I think the Natick BNA overall is just, it's got great committed people who, who really who really care about patients and families. And, 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 you'll, and although you're far away in Natick, you'll come as far as Wayland? Oh, definitely, If yes. anybody calls. Yeah, we, have a, we have about a 20-plus town service area now. Yes. It's large. That's large. Yeah. But you're very close here when you're here. Yes, yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, thank, thank you, both you. for having uh, us. Uh, as you can see, these are crucial pieces of what you need to know if you've got a family member or if you yourself need services and really want to be staying at home. And it's great to know that you've got folks that are like really, really close, mm -hmm. right? And obviously really caring to be interested in these services. So we're, I've asked these folks to, to, to get a banner to the, to the way, to Wacam so that you can get the contact information for them. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll look forward to uh, talking to you in the next uh, installment of Virgil on Greece. Thank you very much.